What I'm going to talk about in this video is the important concept of terminal velocity in O-level physics. And uh, before uh, the terminal velocity, I would uh, give an introduction of the air resistance. So what is air resistance? Air resistance. So this air resistance is the opposing force on the object when it moves through the air. Let's say there is a car and it's moving in the in the air let's say that it's traveling on the road and this is the forward force of the engine this is the forward force and the opposing force of the air this opposing force this is the air resistance right it is also a form of a frictional force although the frictional force between the wheels and the road is also experienced but this air resistance is the drag force that an object experiences when it moves in the in the air right this is a form of a frictional force so since it's a frictional force it always and always opposes opposes the motion of the moving object it always the air resistance always opposes air resistance always <clears throat> opposes the motion of moving objects furthermore it increases this air resistance is going to increase with the speed of the object so if the if the speed of the car increases or if this if a ball is falling under the influence of air resistance and if its speed increases right if its speed increases this air resistance is also going to increase so it increases with the speed of the object air resistance increases these points are very important to establish the fundamental concept of terminal velocity right so air resistance increases with the speed of the object And one other thing that is very important is that it also increases with the surface area or size of the object. The larger the surface area, the larger the air resistance that would act on it. So if you have a small object with a smaller area and if you have a large object right like this, it has a larger area. So the, if, if the area of this is A1 and if the area of this is A2, so A2 is greater than A1 and this surface will experience a larger air resistance. So it increases the air resistance increases with the area or size of the object air resistance increases with the with the area or size of the object and it also increases with the density of air the denser the air the more the air resistance that's pretty straight, straightforward so it increases with the density of air so uh, moving on if let's say this is an object right this is an object and it is falling under the influence of air resistance right so once it falls Obviously, it, have, it has a force of weight that is mg and the air resistance is acting in the opposite direction to the motion. So, the air resistance is acting in the opposite direction. This is the air resistance. I will denote it with R. So, mg is the force of gravity that is acting on an object. right? This is the weight and this is the air resistance. So the moment the object is thrown in the air, what happens? That the resultant force is that resultant force is going to decrease, right? So if there was if there is no air resistance, the only force that would act on the object is the weight. But when it when we throw this object in the air, the resultant force the resultant force is now is now equal to mg minus r if it is moving downwards, right? mg minus r and uh, newton's second law states that that the resultant force is the product of 
mass and acceleration. Resultant force is the product of mass and acceleration. I'll shed more light on this in my videos on the Newton's laws. So F is the resultant force. And M is the mass of the object that is falling, right? In this scenario, and A is the acceleration. So I can write this like this. I can substitute this expression that is mg minus r into this. So mg minus r is like this, right? And divided by m is the acceleration. So what happens when an object falls in a uniform gravitational field, it accelerates until A resistance is equal to the weight. That is the pull of gravity. So when the air resistance is equal to the weight, it then continues to fall at a constant velocity, which is known as the terminal velocity. So I'm going to give you an example by putting in the values. Let's say the weight of the object is the weight that is mg is equivalent to 50 Newton, right? So obviously the mass that's going to be five kilograms. Since I'm taking acceleration of free fall as the G as 10 meter per second square. That is what we use in O levels, right? So I'm going to write here. Let's say I'm going to treat it in different, you know, steps. So A is 50. Let's say the air resistance initially was 10 and M is 5. So answer is going to be 8 meter per second square, right? Then as the object moved downwards, the air resistance increased. So I'll say that air resistance has increased to 25 Newton. And now my answer is 5 meter per second square. The moment the value, this value, the value of the of the air resistance that increases and equals to the weight, the acceleration is zero then. So 50 minus 50 divided by five is zero meter per second square. This is the point where the acceleration is zero. And the object has reached its maximum constant velocity. The object has reached the maximum constant velocity that maximum constant velocity when the weight of the object is equal to the air resistance that maximum constant velocity is what we call terminal velocity so this is the maximum constant velocity is reached when when the air resistance equals the weight as I've shown you mathematically, I've explained there, right? So when the air resistance equals the weight, the resultant force is zero and the acceleration is also zero and the object reach, reaches a velocity, which is known as the terminal velocity, right? And this velocity, this velocity is known as the terminal velocity. When the weight of the object is equal to the air resistance. So uh, when I'll draw the graph, uh, that would be more clear to you. So let's say this is the graph of this object falling under the influence of air resistance. This is essentially the speed time graph, right? This is the speed time graph. So this is the speed in meter per second. And this is the time in second. So what happens initially when when the object is thrown, it will fall with the gravitational acceleration and eventually this acceleration is going to decrease. You see the gradient is decreasing and then eventually the gradient goes to zero. And this is the point when the object has reached its terminal velocity, right? So you see the, the gradient of the object, the gradient is decreasing. Initially, the gradient was uh, equivalent to the acceleration of free fall, right? But as the object fell under the influence of air resistance, this gradient decreases, right? This gradient decreases. That means that since the gradient of the speed time graph gives you the acceleration, so the acceleration is decreasing. And at this point, you see this point, between this point, when the line is straight, here the gradient is zero, so the acceleration is zero. And when the acceleration is zero, the object has reached its maximum constant velocity. That velocity is known as the terminal velocity. So we'll, from the graph, we'll see that this is the terminal velocity.
this thing that is the terminal velocity so this is the speed time of graph of an object falling under the influence of air resistance and the object reaches a terminal velocity if the object fell without air resistance the graph would have been a straight line with constant gradient and that graph would have been i have already explained in the previous video and the that graph would have been like this that graph would have been like this a straight line with constant gradient so this this blue line indicates an object falling without air resistance and this white line you see this is with air resistance so i'll say that this thing this is the terminal velocity when the acceleration is zero remember that the forces are balanced i'll also make make a video on the balanced forces and unbalanced forces and we'll discuss the newton laws there as well if you want to find the distance covered by the object you just have to calculate the area under this curve you, you'll make an approximation you'll make a triangle like this and you'll make this rectangle or you can simply make a trapezium and you can find the area i'm i'm going to come towards that later right so let's just discuss if a heavy object falls under the influence of air resistance and if a light object falls under the influence of air resistance so heavy and light objects and let's see how their graph would differ with each other so let's say i have a heavy object and i have a light object so this is a heavy object let's say this is a heavy object and uh, this is a light object both are falling under the influence of uh, air resistance right both are falling under the influence of air resistance so their graphs would be different i'm going to draw the graphs and you'll see the difference what will happen i'm going to draw the speed time graph so this is the velocity the speed in meter per second this is the same as meter per second like this since this is in the denominator that comes upwards and and it becomes ms minus 1 right so it's essentially the same and this is the time in second so the heavy object the heavy object is that's going to fall like this the, the graph would be something of this sort right eventually it will reach the terminal velocity and the light object it will reach the terminal velocity earlier and its resultant acceleration would be something of this sort you see it reaches terminal velocity earlier and its acceleration is lesser after some time eventually they started at the same instant but this object the heavy object it reached terminal velocity later and the lighter object would reach terminal velocity earlier and uh, this is how you can differentiate between the heavier object and the lighter object right so this graph is a perfect example of the difference between the speed time graph of a heavy object and a light object so we we usually encounter such type of questions in our o level physics syllabus 5054 and igcse right okay moving ahead a very 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 important concept regarding the motion of a parachutist it has a lot of questions in the exam so let's say a a person he falls from a aeroplane and he opens his parachute after some time i'm going to draw the speed time graph speed time graph of his motion so let's say this is the speed in meter per second and this is the time in seconds so the graph would be something of this sort the person fell and eventually he since he's moving under the influence of air resistance he reached the terminal velocity right like this and then after reaching the terminal velocity the moment he opened his parachute there was a large deceleration shown by this vertical line downwards so since the parachute opened there was a large air resistance act that acted on that parachute so the velocity decreases you see the velocity goes from here to here and again he reaches this terminal velocity and then eventually he comes to halt right 
So this is the graph of the graph of a parachutist falling under the influence of air resistance. Right? This is when he reached the terminal velocity with when he did not open the parachute and here he opened the parachute. There was a large deceleration as you can see. There was a there was a, the, the speed of the object decreased rapidly and then he reached the terminal velocity again and then he landed. So this is a speed time graph of a parachutist falling under the influence of air resistance. I'm going to denote this with large deceleration when he opened the parachute. Large deceleration. Parachute opened at this instant, right? At this instant. And if you want to find the distance traveled by the parachutist, you, you'll simply find the area under the curve. You can approximate it like this. Let's say you have a graph like this. What you can do is, since the graph is of this sort, what, you, what you'll do is that you'll divide it into different parts. The first can be approximated like a trapezium, right? Like a trapezium. And the other one, like a rectangle and a small triangle. So you can add all the areas. You can say that this is area one, this is area two. And let's say this is area. This, is, this can also be done like a trapezium. You can also make it a trapezium. So you can choose whatever method you like and you'll add all the areas and that will give you the total distance traveled by the parachutist. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, cleared a lot of concepts regarding the terminal velocity. Stay tuned for more videos, uh, subscribe to my channel Physics with Cyrus Asak and keep learning and remain motivated. Thank you very much.